Hey there everyone, welcome back to Dweeb Factory. We're coming to you from the Geek House in Dallas, Texas, and help us welcome our new friend Corey to the show. How you guys doing? I'm Corey, and I'm a little sticky right now. My name is Bo, and I travel the cosmos with Grimace. I'm Kevin, and I like to party. And I'm Zach, and I don't even know what's going on right now, but I'm excited. <laughs> Into it. Starting off tonight with uh, Gambit. Fox is moving forward with their solo Gambit film. It's going to be starring Channing Tatum. Um, we're going to have the producer from Planet of the Apes, uh, Rupert Wyatt, going to be directing it. Um, what do you guys think? Can Channing Tatum really pull off a real Louisiana Cajun accent for this film? <laughs> so that's one thing he's kind of been like chatting about. It's like, oh, I'm getting ready for my accent. But let's really look at it. Fox has X-Men, which is a huge property. They're having two standalone solo movies, Deadpool and Gambit. I love Chang Tatum and 21 Jump Street. My name is Jeff. Yeah, dude. Right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. And uh, it kills me, dude. Like, all the gifts and everything. But, like, and then Foxcatcher. You have two extremes. This is a, an in-between. This They've wanted Channing Tatum, like, from the beginning... They, even when they, like, the original Wolverine film with, uh, what's his name? Uh, you talking about Origins? Yeah, Taylor Kitsch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They wanted to recruit him back then, but, you know, he's busy with other films and this and that, but I love Chain Tatum. I love, I just don't know if he can carry a solo comic book movie yeah. film. I hope the best for him. Bo, what do you think about these comments? Um, I, I think Channing Tatum is, is one of those actors that has actually really evolved well. And one of the reasons I think that is because he does the extreme comedy, he does the extreme serious, right? Like you were saying, Foxcatcher, I don't know if you ever saw Spartacus. He didn't have, was it not Spartacus? That one Spartan movie he's in, where he's some Spartan guy, it's on Netflix, whatever. But he, he oh, doesn't... Oh, The Eagle. The Eagle, The Eagle. Yeah, The Eagle. Yeah, the Eagle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spartacus. But... He's, he doesn't say too much in that movie, but it's the actual, um, it's the blocking that is... The drama behind it. Yeah, the drama behind yeah. it, and, and his actual movements and his facial expressions and everything else that I, I think is going to be something that, that's intriguing behind the character. Because Gambit, when you look at him in the comics, he isn't one of those guys that's an extreme, like, oh, I'm super serious all the time, or I'm joking, I'm laughing in everyone's face, right? He's... He's got a healthy dynamic to him, and I, and I think that he's got a great dynamic to his acting, so I think he'll do great. Yeah, um, one thing about the whole Taylor Kitsch version of Gambit is I think the writing fell a little flat. They didn't really give him a lot of great plot points to really... I mean, he was kind of an afterthought in the, in the Origins movie, so if Channing Tatum can really bring it to life, um, obviously he's going to be able to bring some humor to the role, which I think is great. I mean, Gambit's always kind of a charmer. So I think he's he's got like the look. Um, I'm just not sure how it's gonna play with some of the other characters that they choose to incorporate. All right, guys, moving on. We got Ghostbusters. Possible spoiler alert: Sony is rebooting Ghostbusters. Yes, the two films from the '80s, um, but they're gonna switch it up and put an all-female cast behind it. Um, what do you guys think? All-female cast for Ghostbusters? Kevin, what do you think? It's a different look, of course, but I'm, I'm pretty positive about it. A lot of the ladies are from SNL. We've got Kristen Wiig, Kate McKinnon, um, of course, Melissa McCarthy, and what was the last one, Zach? Leslie uh, Jones. Leslie, Leslie Jones, Jones yeah. which, by the way... She, she's up and coming on SNL, too. She is, but she, I'm a huge SNL fan. I've watched every single episode from the beginning because I have no life or friends, but... Leslie Jones, she does not have comedic timing. She cannot do live shows. She she can't do any of it. Really? She messes up. Like, literally, there's ten episodes where the show is ruined. Like, the mystery of the show is ruined because she can't even memorize her lines. Oh, wow. But she's yeah. great at stand-up. See, it's, been, it's actually been a little while since I've gotten into SNL. So, Leslie's a little well, bit new be, to me. I, I love Kate McKinnon. It's that's because you have friends, I and I don't. And that's why you <laughs> don't hey, watch us We, we, we don't do. come on Saturdays. <laughs> yeah. But, um, to your point, yeah, I just, I'm skeptical about it. Everyone loves Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig, 
She has a good or bad. Yeah, and well, you have Paul Feig who did. Spy, which is killing it right now. The and Heat what? and Bridesmaids. And Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids. Top three. Yep. McCarthy was in all of them. Bo, what do you think? Uh, I just want to see Thor as the actual secretary, is what I <laughs> want to see. It. Getting it. Yes. <laughs> I want to see that. Just because I think Chris Hemsworth is the man, you know? So I, I, I think he, he's yeah, going to bring a funny, healthy dynamic to that show. A little flip Movie. side fan Movie. service. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how funny was he in that? Vacation trailer. Oh, he, he was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. He did a good job. All right, next up, guys, we got Turbo Kid. If you guys haven't seen the trailer for Turbo Kid, watch it. It's intense. You're mixing <laughs> Mad Max, Kung Fury. You've got everything in it. And what do you think, Bo? Let me go off on this for a little bit. Like he what said, like Corey said, we got Mad Max. We got influences of Kung Fury. Which, you, if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. It's on YouTube. It's amazing. We, we did also a video. have. Yes. We, did a video. we also have influences in this from Mega Man and also a slight Borderlands feel, which is amazing. Yeah. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of 80s synthesizer tunes. There's a lot of ridiculous costumes. There's comic books. There's some awkward uh, teenage love. That's exactly the kind of movie I want. It's awesome. And what something else that I think is interesting is how it's actually doing at places like Sundance. It's killing it at Sundance. So you have movies like Dope, which people have been like, oh, like Dope's great. Trust me, I'll be at the theater this weekend watching Dope. Great, like John Hughes film, like, you know, this and that, but this is an unknown movie. This is not, this is on the scale of like a YouTube video. Yeah. Yeah. But yet it's going to Sundance and performing like nothing else. This does not have big actors. This does no. not have a big director. This is literally almost like subpar people just shooting a video, putting it together, and putting it at Sundance. And it literally is penetrating the minds of editors and critics like us, and it's it's killing it. Kevin, when you saw the trailer, because there was a trailer online, what did you what did you think about it? Um, I mean, it it automatically made me think of a couple of cult classics that I love like Kick-Ass, like Scott Pilgrim. Um, it, it just seems like it's going to be an offbeat, really action-packed comedy. And I, I love how the I love how the bad guy's just shooting razor blades at people. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> and, then, and then he's got the turbo saw glove. Blades. Saw blades, yeah. yeah. And then saw he's got blades. the turbo glove where he literally punches a guy and blows him up. Was the turbo that was glove, awesome. was that the original Nintendo Power Glove colored? Yes. I think was that I Nintendo so. Power Glove? Okay, so. I'm sorry. I've never heard of the Nintendo Power Glove until like a year ago, but everyone's talking about Nintendo Power Glove. Yeah. Like it's the coolest like dinosaur bone is. that ever existed. <laughs> like if you own a Nintendo awesome. Power Glove, yeah, just like you're cool. I'm like, I wish I've known that ten years ago. Would have invested in Nintendo. Power I'm sure you can Glove. find one on eBay for like. 800 bucks. Million, yeah, grand. Like no, dude, like... <laughs> Stupid prices. Man. Yeah, just like, what does it do? I don't know, but I'm wearing a glove that works with my Nintendo. Oh, my gosh. So, I'm sorry. We'll go on this forever, but we're all excited. Oh, yeah. yeah. Super. Oh, Super. yeah. Uh, yeah, watch watch the trailer. It's worthwhile. Um, next up, we got Kung Fu Panda 3. Got two huge names coming to Kung Fu Panda 3. Brian Cranston Spoiler alert, if you guys haven't seen the trailer yet, is going to be Poe's dad. And then we've also got J.K. Simmons from Whiplash the, as the villain. He plays a bull, wields swords, attached to chains. Pretty intense. <laughs> Kevin, God's what's up? What do you guys think? <laughs> well, obviously, I love Brian Cranston. Even just doing the voice acting, he can just put so much emotion out there and... Like you said, if, if he's going to play Bo's dad, Poe's dad, not Bo's dad. Bo's dad is not a panda. But he is a martial arts Bo's dad, master. you mess you up, though. <laughs> you up. Do not <laughs> mess with uh, Bo's dad. Brian Cranston is an amazing talent. I've been there. And he, he can just bring, he can bring it to any kind of medium. Um, honestly, I love J.K. Simmons. He's, he's got some great voice acting experience with Avatar, uh, the, the Legend of Korra. Mm -hmm. And he brings a lot of nuance to that series as well. Huge so. underrated actor. And, and we see him as, as the good guy, the mentor in that series. I really want to see how he can dig in and, and get evil with it. But what do you think? I just want to see Skadoosh. 
Skindy. Skindy. That's all I want to say. Because <laughs> because think about it, that was the end all move when he beat up that big old tiger guy yeah, at the end of the ball. first one. Yeah. So what I want to see is where Skadoosh is used a couple times and it's actually countered. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, meaning like your ultimate move has been defeated. Yeah. Now you so have to now he's got to get creative. Next level. Yeah. 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 So now he's got a double Skadoosh. Skadoosh. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and you know Jack Black is going to have so much love with that. <laughs> Skadoosh. You, you know, something like that. But I think it's a huge stack <laughs> cast of voice actors. And I think it's, I'm really excited, like, I did not, come on guys, let's both agree, I know I'm gonna rant about this for like a quick second, but when we saw Kung Fu Panda 3 trailer, did we think we'd laugh as hard? <laughs> oh, no, watch it. no watch I saw the original Kung Fu Panda, and I was like, great, that's awesome. I'm, I thought it would just be another way for kids to drag their parents to the movie. Yeah, I saw. No, no, I not frozen. Not like frozen. I literally it's saw. Not frozen. Not, frozen. It's no, not I saw bad. the original Kung Fu Panda on my 18th birthday. Yeah. Just to like hang out and like. Which was last. Just year. to hook up with the girl. Yes. I'm. <laughs> I'm barely 18 years old. Thank you so much. But we did not expect it. It was great. Yeah. What else do we have on the plate? All right, guys. Moving over to some gaming stuff. Uh, E3 Expo in Los Angeles this past couple days. Awesome out there. Kevin, what we got from Nintendo, Man. Sony? Just e E3 altogether just blew my mind. So many great games that we just don't have time to cover them all. So let us know what you really liked in the comments below. Subscribe. Just keep sharing what you really want to hear with us. But as, as far as Nintendo goes, um, the, the Wii U is really that platform that they're trying to push right now. And honestly, I think they fell short. They can push it as hard as they want. It's not going to work. I mean... They, they didn't wow us with a new Zelda for for the Wii U like we've been waiting for. They showed us that teaser trailer last year. Yeah, right. I mean, they're, they're, they're sating our appetite with some 3DS titles. We got Heroes of the Triforce, and we got Hyrule Warriors, which is just the Dynasty Warriors equivalent. We got that moving over to the 3DS with a little bit of extra content there. Um, they came out with some great news for Super Smash Bros. with some DLC characters. Ryu's jumping in the mix, and that's a huge, yep. Yep. huge... Reveal for for a Nintendo game bringing in characters from other developers, but other other than that, I mean, we didn't get a great showing from Nintendo this year. Yeah, it, it we're really were who came out swinging was was Sony with um, swinging and knocked out out, out of, of the park. park. Yes, absolutely. With uh, Final Fantasy VII remake, yeah. huge Doom Doom. Um, get, it, get it with some doom. Uh, well, th there's there was actually a lot that came out for Sony. So there was, um, uh, what was it? Uh, that Shadow of the Colossus one. What was the, the name last of that Guardian? The, the last Guardian. The last Guardian. Guardian. Oh, that is a cult favorite. The the Sony universe. The audience has been clamoring for that one, which, and that was a huge reveal to start off Sony's press conference. Absolutely. Which I don't get, but even when I still watch the trailer, like it's a very artistic trailer it's beautiful like, yep. people that like that art and like that gameplay love it my best friend cody who obsesses over uh shadows of the colossus oh i won't see him for 10 days after this game comes out just because he loves the gameplay yeah. and the Binge art playing. but i yeah, can yeah. really i can appreciate the art yeah. uh, another one was kingdom hearts 3 oh my gosh um uh, we're really excited for kingdom hearts 3 that's one that a lot of the fans have just been chomping at the bit for just so that we could really finally see that third could because the first one came out um on playstation 2 and then the second one came out and that was on playstation 2 as well yep, yep. and it was quite close so the gap between yep. two and three has been huge yeah and so that's when I mean, we've just been replaying it over and over again yeah, having our health had a lot of handheld it was so close because how popular the, the, the it was card based game as well um, right right yeah. that was chain of memories that actually came out on the game boy advance first yeah. off but yeah, like I said, we've had a lot of handheld titles to kind of keep us going. Yeah. We had Birth by Sleep. We had the Dream Drop Distance on the 3DS, which was good. And that really sets up Kingdom Hearts 3, which is the big climax for the entire yeah, series. I feel like that's what so they've far. done. It's like 1 and 2 were so close together because it's like she's such a huge demand. And they were so scared to release 3 because they were like, what if we mess it up? Like, okay, let's just do this and that and this and that. It's like Halo. ODST, this, that, like, let's just release small little titles, and when we want to do our big load, let's... Half-Life 3. 
Confirmed? <laughs> Never. <laughs> I think he just calm added. Down, down. I think he just added three years to the release date because we mentioned it. Yeah. G- Gabe actually <laughs> says <laughs> that every, every time, time someone asks for Half Life Three, he delays it another six months. Yes. Half Life Three. Half Life Three. Half Life no, Three. No. No. Please no. But right. some of the some so of Charlie, the things. Charlie. <laughs> Some of the thing, and we and Kevin and I went went into a bigger spiel for another video on E3, so you'll be able to get some more details. But just real quick to wrap up a lot of our gaming news. Some of the things that I'm excited about are the Fallout 4 gameplay, which was yeah. totally sweet because you could see the customization of every character, but um, is that also Xbox the building. Uh, it is not. No. Okay. It is not. Of course, they're doing. There they're, 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 they're doing a little bit of the timed releases where it, Xbox gets it, some it, games it. first, PS4 gets some games first. They're getting the Destiny. It has to be on PC, so like we can all mod the living daylights out of yep, it. Of course, okay. exactly the same way we did with Skyrim, Oblivion, Morrowind, Fallout Three, and New got Vegas, it. and all that. So yeah, but if if we missed any of the games from E3, like the new Mass Effect that was announced, yep. I mean, the new Uncharted was was kind of overlooked. In all of the, yeah, all of the huge Sony hype, so uh, Doom Four, we got we got a little bit about. more from Doom Four. Gears of War, the first one is remastered, being sent to PC only. They're going to add a little bit extra uh, content to it, which is awesome. I, I, I love PC. the first gear. Oh yeah, Master yep. Race, enter in, brother. <laughs> and then also there's Gears of War Four, which I'm really excited about. I'm a huge fan of Gears of War. I've played every single one since the first one, all the way through. Um, Got a new trailer out for that, Yeah, too. the new trailer came out. There's yeah. really nothing new from Gears of War that we've seen other than the big lizard dude with a bunch of mandibles and eight tongues trying to eat your face off. But it's really cool. It's really neat. We're going to be able to see a lot more of, um, of, an, of improved gameplay, obviously improved graphics, a better, I'm assuming it's an Unreal Engine again. So it... That's really just a lot of the stuff we're excited about. Like I said, tune into the other video Kevin and I put out about a lot of the E3 news just to get a little bit more caught up on that. Yeah. All right, guys. Moving away from gaming, over some television, uh, Netflix has announced that they're going to be pulling out $1.5 billion, you hear me right, billion dollars to put towards next year's TVs and movie shows that they've got on Netflix to try and, try and outdo everybody. Showtime, HBO... Star Show, uh, Cinemax are putting all those together, taking them out. Um, 36 new original series that they plan to put out next year. 15 shows from this year are getting renewed series. We've also got 25 new uh, films, miniseries, and specials that they're going to put out next year. Just trying to cover all of it, guys. What do you guys think? Uh, I'll start it off as one who's worked kind of in, the, in this industry. I've worked for several cable and satellite companies and have kind of been in this field. This is insane. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Billion dollars. Absolutely insane. Like there's like direct TV who don't even want to like renew the Sunday NFL ticket for 200 million, but Netflix is willing to take out a billion dollar loan and overall 5 billion dollar put out original content. This guy who's running Netflix is either a visionary or an insane person. One of the two. But how much of us not do both. not have not a Netflix? Not <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, can eat it too. But or here's the thing, like, how much of us do not have a Netflix account? I have a Netflix account for me. Like, because now you can like You can add people yeah. to it. Right? So I have Five, me, six. my wife, my three year old, my sister at college, and my sister at home. Cause it's like Ten dollars a month. Yeah. Yeah. But guess what? Here's the thing. You're like, how can they afford to do that? They have so many subscribers. They can afford to do that. They have amazing content. They have amazing content. Um, Corey, what were some of the just the the series like alone? Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, House of Cards, Hemlock Grove, Trailer Park Boys. Trailer oh, Park Boys. Trailer Park Boys. Yeah, another season renewed. Done. Chelsea Handler is doing her. Uh, Sense Eight. Sense yes. Eight was another one yeah, that was incredible. Sense8. Watch have it. you it's, have you watched it? Yes, it's good. good. Sense Eight was great, really good. How far are you into the series? Uh, like four episodes, but they're awesome. Really, six. They're awesome. Six. I yeah. want to start off onto it. Six that's, episodes. So awesome. that's the thing. Netflix is changing the dynamic of about how people watch TV. It is not a weekly episode of okay, let's ramp it up. Someone's gonna die. Something's gonna happen. It's like no, we believe in our content so much. We'll release thirteen episodes. And you're going to love it, 
watch it, digest it. It's watch it over and over and over again. If you I am I'm unsure about Netflix's overall view on how things are going because the CEO of Netflix is like, I want to like destroy movie theaters. I want to like destroy how all media is like put together. How do you feel? How do you, how do you feel about that? I love movie theaters. I love communal experiences. Yeah. But it's kind of like a we've catch, talked about that. But it's a catch twenty two. It's like he's doing an amazing job. How can I not agree with what he's doing? But at the same time, I love going to theater. I don't want anything video on demand. But Bo, as like you, as a big, really good guy who watches a lot of stuff online, how do you feel about? The so Netflix I, versus TV service or movie theaters. I blow all my money on games. So I don't have it in me to say, oh, well, I'll just get some AT&T U-verse or whatever it is to have TV. I, I can't justify that because I'd rather spend my money on games just because that's, that, that's what I do. So there's Netflix, there's Showbox, there's YouTube. There's Crackle, there's Red Bull TV, there's all sorts of stuff that you Which can watch. Which we all expect money now because we mentioned you. All of you. Yes, Every we'll waiting. single one. But 50, th that's, cents. 50 cents a day will provide me and Bo with enough money to eat. Just a small 50 cents a day mailed stamped to us here at the Geek House will provide us with enough bread to feed us. Thank Twinkies. You. But the reason <laughs> the reason I'm really excited about it is just because for someone who doesn't actually every month uh, actually pay for a cable service. I'm really excited about that because I'll finish a show on Netflix because I, I remember I finished House of Cards and Hemlock Grove and then I watched Residue which is um, it's a three part pilot right now I think. Yeah. And then there's uh, one or two other shows that I've watched and I remember I was just like well now I gotta wait till next year but now there's just going to always be content no, to watch. It's, it's, it's always going to be something I have in the background when I'm working, when I'm at home, when I'm whatever. It's insane to so, keep up with. Like, yeah. They're coming out with tons of series like uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, which I'm, none of you guys like, but I love. It's 30 Rock Humor. But Kevin, do you, are you an avid watcher of Netflix or how do you feel? I, I play a lot of games. And so, so when I do have time to watch Netflix, um, I'm normally catching up on some of my other shows. I, I like to watch a lot of stuff online. Like, I'm catching up on Flash right now. Um, I, I was kind of getting into Arrow, and those aren't on Netflix per se. Arrow is? Arrow is, no. Arrow is, Arrow is for the first two seasons, yeah. I believe. Who's not paying us any money yet, so we don't need to say their name. <laughs> like, it's like Baltimore. <laughs> like, them who not. It's those who will not be But yeah, I mean, exactly. honestly, I mean. honestly, right now, what Case I have money. been watching on Netflix money is money. like, Bill Nye the Science Guy is out on Netflix now. Bill! 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 <laughs> <laughs> and like Magic School Bus, yeah, and, and that's what I've been watching recently on Netflix. I don't get out much. Um, really, it it gets down to uh, licensing, I think, because if you noticed, right after Paul Walker passed away, there was suddenly more Paul Walker movies, right on on Netflix. I mean, it's not yeah, like every Fast and Furious movie was out on Netflix after that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's things like that. So I think what it is also is actually being able to fund having the licensing rights to a lot of these other shows. So it's not, I don't think it's solely $1.5 billion to add onto their current 900K department from last year in order to get brand new shows. I think it's also going to get other movies, other franchises, other TV shows that have already been made, are being filmed, are continuously being filmed. So that way they can bring that to Netflix as well. That's going to expand the base as well. I mean, look at HBO. It, it's it's extremely exclusive. It's not on anything else but HBO. I think that Netflix has set the bar. Do you guys think if there was not Netflix, there would be HBO Go? No. Absolutely Why would not. HBO Go Absolutely not. Yeah. even exist? Why would they put out every single season of Entourage for people to view for $10 a month? Yeah. That's stupid. Well, Netflix has forced their hand. It's the way things go. Yeah. And Hulu's great, but Hulu's still owned by... ABC, you know what I mean? Hulu yeah. is still owned by huge corporations. Well, you look at this trend, and, and it's it, it's kind of like Redbox and Netflix, where or not Netflix, Redbox and Blockbuster, where as soon as Redbox came out, 
Blockbuster was doing the, oh, well, now you can do the same thing for us. We have a little kiosk here and there and whatnot. And, and it slaughtered it in a year or two, less yeah. than that. Oh, it destroyed it. And, and it was just because, granted, Redbox has raised their prices since then. Yeah. But it's still dirt cheap. The funny thing about that is, is actually Blockbuster had a chance to buy Netflix and turned it down. And they're like, we'll do good on our own stores and everything's really good. Yeah. Oh well, because at gosh. the time, Netflix didn't have the type of content. software, yeah, content, and also software that they put out. Before, it was like Gamefly, where right. you just have a game, or excuse me, a, a movie sent to your doorstep. Right. And then whenever they came out with, you can access a database. Streaming. Streaming, yeah, you can stream, you know, X amount of movies, but Netflix still does something where, well, if you want to see the latest thing, you can order it to your door. Right, yeah. You know, so, and, and, I, and that kind of vision... I guess Blockbuster didn't have that then, you know, and, and that's why they turned it down. I didn't have much vision at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, moving on. Um, Game of Thrones season five finale. Bo, please don't cry. Everybody, listen up. Spoiler alert. Um, if you all right. Seen it? Click it out. Um, lots of death, destruction, a humiliating walk of shame, um, and the biggest, most talked about death on there. Once again, spoiler alert, Jon Snow. All right, let me just spoil the daylights out of this right now. You've been warned. Through the magic You've of been warned. Ending, we will have spoilers coming from right someone here. Coming from someone who has watched the, everything and also absorbed everything from the books and also had the little like thing afterward, like the little encyclopedia dictionary thing where you can look everyone up. Or Jon Snow tattooed on their face. Anyways, I'm doing so, yeah. that's, that's anyway, so yeah. <laughs> here's here's something that they don't actually talk about in uh, the show. Something they don't talk about in the show is that when Bran takes control of his wolf, you know, he's like, and his eyes roll to the back of his head. He's like, controlling his wolf and whatnot. And the wolf goes around and oh, eats people. Yeah, I do that a lot too. <laughs> and <laughs> and he goes around and eats people. Jon Snow can actually do the same thing, but he but he's actually he hasn't developed that skill in the way Bran does it. Bran figured it out early on, right? right. Now at the end of this season, was that because of loss of his legs? He developed that skill because of less of other. There senses? was a lot of yeah. There was a lot of stuff of when he went into his coma for a while after Jamie Lannister pushed him out the window and whatnot. Um, I asked that because I haven't read the books, but avid watcher of the show. Yeah, there's there is a lot of things with with him dreaming and yada yada. Yeah, he he basically he figured it out early on. But Ghost John Snow's wolf is still alive at the end of this season. You don't ever see what happened to Ghost, right? Because if they were smart, what they would have done is kill Ghost. And so my whole theory is a lot of people are like uh, John Snow's the White Walker. And I'm, no, he's trying to fight them. He's not going to be raised as a White Walker. Also, some people's theories are, are that that red lady, that chick who worships the Lord of Light, is gonna be like <sighs> and raise him up from the dead and what? Crazy chick you dated in high school? Yeah, no, she's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she she's not. I don't I don't think she's she's going to raise him up from the dead. Granted, the sixth book hasn't come out yet. So when someone asks George R. R. Martin, "Why did you kill Jon Snow?" and he's like, "Ha, you really think he's dead?" So that's a whole illusion to, or not illusion, I guess foreshadow to what could happen with Ghost, because we don't know what happened to Ghost at the end. And also, beginning of, I, I think what George R. R. Martin did at the beginning of the fifth book, um, was that at Dance of Dragons, he actually spent a good while, about a chapter or two, explaining how there was a wildling that had the same type of werewolf feature thing, and he would hop from animal to animal as he was killed off. And the way he actually died was when one animal was dying while he was trying to move to another body, and that one died at the same time, and it killed him off. So Jon Snow's character could quite possibly go to Ghost, right? And because Danny is now on dragons and whatnot, flying around, going north and whatnot, she could run into something like that. She could have him on her side. Because with the way everything's getting set up, Stannis and his army, I'm so glad that got stamped out because that was getting annoying. It was a subplot that was quite dull, especially when he burnt his daughter and then his wife went Dude, and hung herself. Like, my wife was like, I, she was almost done with the show. Like, she was like straight up like... Deal breaker. Yeah, no, that yeah. was a huge deal breaker And then you see undead little kids in, in episode eight. It no, she didn't even have a problem with that. She was just like... 
Those kids are already dead. That's their problem. But straight up, that dad is burning her daughter. I have a problem with that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, it, I had to like, convince her to keep deep. watching it. Real deep. Yeah. It, it was there's so some bad. shock value to that. Now, now so also bad. there was there's the scene of the the was it High Sparrow? Yeah, the High Sparrow mm-hmm. sending um I don't like Cersei. that guy in anything, by the way. G.I. Joe, bro. Dude, I don't like the guy in anything. <laughs> and then on no. top of that, the chick who played Cersei had to have a body double walk, like, do her walk of shame. Like, the actress herself couldn't even do the whole walk there at the end. They superimposed her face and had a body double do the whole thing. It's yeah. just like... She was an actress and didn't want to endure it. It's like, you're an actress. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're paid to do. Look yeah. at Christian Bale. Like, well, you, the, the, you, reason, the reason I think the walk of shame was so awesome was because Cersei was already enough of a jerk, enough, of as, it, enough as it is, right? And I, I think that for season six, that's going to set up, like, ruthlessness. Because she tried using the High Sparrow and all those religious weirdos to, mm, to her advantage and it totally backfired on her and she's totally full of vengeance all the time all the time and then also her daughter especially since her daughter gets killed when jamie's like yeah i'm actually your dad you know star wars scene and she stuff died. and she actually dies she's like thanks dad spoilers. i know you're my Which dad but you're my 10 minutes before spoilers, spoilers, but, spoiler. but you're my uncle but you're my dad i don't know but then she's like ah and and dies right and so yeah, th- there's going to be a lot of awesome set Kevin because or- I think I think a lot of well, real quick. I'm, I'm while I have this thought. <laughs> good, man. There's a lot of Sorry. there's a lot of subplots that were actually stamped out that were getting quite dull. Like the old guy that was like, "Oh, I like you, Stannis, and I'm going to be your hand of the king and stuff." He's the only one alive now, right? Yeah. Because he sent because Stannis sent him off to go run an errand to say, "Nice much, we need you," and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sam finally <laughs> left. Yeah, Sam finally left. I'm tired of him crying about the wildling girl. And it's really getting down to now we're going to join forces. Now we're going to go whoop some Lannister tail end or whatever it is. I don't know. Tyrell and whatever. And, and, that's, and that's what I'm really excited about is a lot of people were disappointed at how the season ended, how the season went. There, there was only one or two shock values that happened the entire season. But there was actually a ton of rising action and a ton of of plot lines that were taken out so that way you don't have to endure that now a lot of people are also mad that you didn't see brand once the entire season but let's be straight up we never knew what they were wanting to do anyway you guys want to see my impression of brand yeah you want to see it love, 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 love a tree like his legs don't work. He's not that interesting of a character. He gets dragged along by like the huge Frankenstein Igor guy. How do I? He sits there during a battle. Hodor, He's like, Hodor. everyone's fighting, but no. me. He I'm takes sitting control there in the of the wolf. He takes control of the wolf, and he does rip some people up. But yeah. that Eyes only bag, that only happens away. like once or <laughs> twice though. And That's then true. even then, he's like, I'm a wolf, but I can't contact my brother. Like. I don't care for that. Yeah. Now, granted, the, Have, the, my favorite thing from the entire season was when Jon Snow rips up with his awesome sword, rips up that one White Walker, and then when they're all going away in the boats, everyone that they had just killed, everyone that had just died, he <gasps> just he just raises them up. I was like, that's some Wrath of the Lich King stuff, dude. That was cool. Like, that was really cool. Especially see, since it really created the fact that, oh, now we know how this is going to end. Did you see the this meme? This is going to be a White Walker versus everyone right. else thing. Did you see the meme that said, come at me, crow? I love that yeah. meme. I didn't even see the episode. I was like, one episode <laughs> behind. No, Bo. Like, you started told me, like, dude, you're not a fan of the show. You need to watch it. And I saw the meme that said, come at me, crow. And I was like, nice. I'm not watching because my wife will get mad. At this point, I don't care if my wife gets mad. I need to watch it right now. Because that meme was awesome. Yeah, right? no, I went back and I watched all of it. And my wife's like, did you watch it? I'm like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Who's in it? I, but you should watch Who's it in that? another room without me. But yeah, it's great. Kevin, Two cents. you haven't Anything? talked You haven't talked for like ever because we've dominated you. I'm so sorry. But your thoughts on the finale of Game of Thrones. <laughs> well, you're, you're just setting me up for failure here. Because I, I honestly have not watched any Game of Thrones. I've not gotten into the books. I'm going to get slaughtered. No Game of Thrones, no Mad Max. If you guys need Kevin's address to beat him in a pulp, 
Ask for it in the comments. We will help we'll him. Yeah. Ask for it in the comments. <laughs> we'll but we'll get you. him educated. It's fine. But it's well, a- I'll catch up when it's all but online. All right. There you go. Core yeah, didn't have didn't, binge watch. You will no, no. lose Kevin me have for some a really good bring up? <laughs> I'll catch up. Kevin, did you have something really good? Yes. This is where I can talk and you guys are lost. I'll shut up. Because shut up. One Piece, my favorite manga of all time, probably the best manga of all time, actually set a Guinness a big, World mm. Record for the the longest published series and the most the most issues sold of any comic by the same author. Okay? They've sold over 300 million copies of of the manga books. They started in 1997, and it is still going. This this manga is older than most tweens nowadays. All right, Gardner. All right, it's it's been it's been sold in more than 30 countries worldwide. And if you're caught up on the manga like I am, chapter 790 just hit on Thursday, and it was mind blowing. I'm talking Super Saiyan levels here. It's a great manga. It's probably the best one out there. I mean, we got a lot of good ones like Naruto, Fairy Tail, Soul Eater, Bleach, but One Piece blows everything else out of the water. Seriously, please go check it out. It, it's a lot to catch up on, but it's worth every single. Can minute. I jump into this part, Kevin? Yeah. Dragon Ball Z, which we've talked about on the show before. <laughs> Shush. Not go ahead. Dragon go Ball Z it. holds a global and like phenomenon there is. That holds a standard different than anything else. Mm-hmm. One Piece is re- like really close behind this. I'm sorry, Naruto fans. In, in, I in love terms of Naruto. numbers, One Piece has outsold all of the Dragon Ball series. It has, but it's a nostalgic factor at that point. But yes, One Piece is what you're looking for in writing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, every ongoing yeah, episode. That's true. Char- character development. Ichiro Oda is a genius, and he actually pulls a lot of his inspiration from Akira Toriyama, the creator of the Dragon Ball universe and Dragon Ball Z and all that. But you guys Google any single time, like, top ten anime, top ten inspired scenes in anime, um, top ten anything that involves cartoons, there is One Piece in it. Oh, yeah. And it took me a good couple of years to see those videos, and I'm like, why is One Piece in this? And eventually I started watching the series, I got into it, and Kevin was one of the really big people that brought me into it, and we hope that our show does that for you guys. Yeah. Like, you could listen to us and say, I don't watch Game of Thrones or Mad Max like Kevin does, or I don't watch One Piece like most of us do, but... I'm telling you guys, we don't recommend this stuff to you because we like it and we're fans. We recommend it to you because we understand that your money is worth it, your time is worth it, and this is really good stuff. Eventually, if you don't believe it, we'll give you at least my address. You can come to my address and talk to me about it. No, I don't. No, there's Zach, a book. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let, me just, let me just throw one thing no, out it's there, No, it's not. It's not going to be in there. Let me, let me just throw one thing out there, guys. And let us know if you'd like to see this, but we're trying to get more ideas for our battle videos. Me and Bo already have a battle lined up to, to where we're going to talk the good and bad points about Destiny. Zach, do you want to have a battle where you defend Goku and I defend Luffy from One Piece? That's not a battle. That's a massacre. Because I'll Good luck. destroy you. Good right, luck. Good Luffy, luck. Let us know. Let us know down in the comments if you guys want to see him duke it out. We're like building up this battle video. So like all of four of our fans. Nah, we have quite a bit, but still, this battle video will be intense. Please let us know. Like there's several topics. Like what do you want to see as a remake? Yeah. Um, what director you want to see direct what movie? What casting you think is better than another casting? We saw on one of our favorite channels, what do you think should be a Fantastic uh, Four pitch? Like, what should be the movie pitch? Let us know, because really, we're here sitting really calm, but if we get to punch each other's in the face and defend our topics, we would absolutely love it. We can get rid of the table, get some gloves out, make it happen. Good. Stop it, Kevin. (laughs) (laughs) Um... For the most part, guys, uh, I think it's everything that we have for this week. We had a lot to talk about. Um, we have a lot of stuff. We're really excited. Hopefully, please let us know about everything from our pro- 
production value. Um, we're going to keep adding new graphics. We're going to keep adding new topics. Um, one thing for us is that we're really excited to shoot is SCG 2015. Put on about screw attack. Um, Funimation is going to be there. A lot of things are going to be there. Epic Gaming Lounge is going to be there putting on a full on tournament. We'll actually have a separate side video talking about how we really excited for is that. Kevin, for you, seeing the whole Dragon Ball Z voice casting at SCG, are you excited for that? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for that. I can't wait to see Christopher Sabat. He actually does a lot of the voices in One Piece as well for their anime. He's one of my favorites. He does Piccolo and Zoro here and there. So it, It's in July. We'll put the actual everything in the description. We're really excited. So please watch... Please watch for all Screw Tax videos. Um, SCG coming up here in Frisco, Texas. We're going to be there. We'll be giving a lot of free stuff, shooting a lot of interviews. If you just want to like pay five dollars and punch one of us in the face, that's Zach really is Zach okay, is willing I'm to worth volunteer. Five dollars. You're like fifteen <laughs> we'll or be at twenty. The line. the line ends with him. <laughs> and also, uh, a couple days later, is actually QuakeCon here in Dallas. Yep. Really excited to see what ID is going to throw will at be us. Covering that. I will be covering some QuakeCon action. We already have some friends uh, that are going to be there, and it's going to be crazy. So, Corey, before we wrap up, what would you like to see going forward with the show? Oh, what would I like to see going forward? I know I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> I like it. Um, I don't know. Probably more in depth on some movies. I mean, you got a lot of stuff coming out this fall. A lot of good movies coming out this fall. Um, just waiting for trailers. Just waiting for trailers. Oscar season. Oscar season. Oscar season's coming up. Yep. Yeah. Right around the corner, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us again here at the Dweeb Factory. Coming to you from the Geek House in Dallas, Texas. Give it a look on Google. Don't forget to comment and subscribe below. Let us know what you want to hear about. Um, don't forget to check out me and Bo's E3 full full review. I mean, again, there was so much stuff that we couldn't even cover, so let us know what you want to hear more about. We'll have more news coming your way. Have a great day. Bye.